Let's talk about Isaiah Pacheco showing up to practice and looking great, all things considered. Nico Remigio making a leaping grab and snagging an absolute missile from Mahomes. Rasheed Rice gearing up for year one in this offense and then see if the Chiefs should consider trading for a certain Jets wide receiver who is about to be traded or released. But first, how about those? First up, I'm excited to announce that football is back in only 50 days. That is five, zero, and one way to know that football is ever so close is because the Chiefs had their first training camp practice this morning, at least for the Chiefs rookies, quarterbacks, and a couple of vets. And here's some immediate good news. Isaiah Pacheco was seen out there today at practice in pads and participating, which means he will not be starting camp on the pup list like Turk Wharton. Pop was out there wearing a yellow scrimmage vest though, which means do not touch this man. He could be seen taking a handoff from Mahomes here, looking pretty sharp, pretty quick. And Rasheed Rice noted that even though Pop is still not a full go, he's out there giving what he can do 110%. He moving as fast as he can just in the warm up, and we like, you know, we could just tell he's excited to be on the field right now. Pete Sweeney of Arrowhead Pride noted that during drills, Pacheco showcased his token explosiveness, quick cuts, and ability to stop on a dime. No issues in the pass game, catching balls in stride and not shying away from leaping up to high point them, which is great news, in my opinion, for his shoulder. The hip fluidity was there with no real sign of injury, and therefore, after seeing all of this from Pacheco, Sweeney does not think Pop is in any danger of missing any regular season time and should be good to go versus the Lions to open up the NFL season. And I like that news quite a bit. So while this is good news and Pacheco did participate in warmups, individual running back drills, as well as returning kickoff slash punt returns from the machine, he did not participate in any team drills, even though he could be heard cheering everyone on from the sideline. And it's worth noting that defensive tackle Turk Wharton was there on the sidelines working with athletic trainers during practice and was the last player on the field. And another veteran who was in attendance was safety Mike Edwards, who is reportedly dealing with a bit of a hamstring injury. And just in case you were wondering, here's who is actually in attendance right now until the vets arrive on Saturday. You have all four quarterbacks in Patrick Mahomes, Blaine Gabbert, Shane Buchel, and Chris Oladukon. I probably say his last name wrong every time. I'm sorry. Three running backs, Isaiah Pacheco, Daneric Prince, and Jerry and Ely. Five wide receivers, Rasheed Rice, Cornell Powell, Nico Remigio, Kakoa Crawford, and Ty Freifogel. I can never say that name without laughing. Anyway, you have five on each side of the trenches. For the O-line, you have Wanye Morris, Mike Caliendo, Jerome Carvin, Jason Godrick, and Anderson Hardy. And for the defensive line, there's Felix Anudike Uzama, BJ Thompson, Keandre Coburn, Truman Jones, and Turk Wharton. Then you have two linebackers in Cam Jones and Isaiah Moore, as well as eight defensive backs. And those are Mike Edwards, Chamari Connor, Nick Jones, Echo Boydo, Anthony Cook, Caleb Halla... <laughs> Khalif Halassi, Isaiah Norman, and Reese Taylor. So it's pretty light right now as far as depth goes, but there were still a few standouts today at practice. Matt McMullen noted that cornerback Nick Jones tallied a pass breakup on a slant during seven on sevens. Rasheed Rice made a contested TD grab as well during sevens, and Patrick Mahomes was seen throwing an absolute laser to Nico Remigio, who made a nice leaping grab for a touchdown. Well, that was certainly a freaking missile from Patrick Mahomes on a rope. Definitely a great connection there, and I'll be intrigued to see if there's more like that to come from the UDFA receiver in Nico Remigio, a guy who, in my opinion at least, has an uphill battle to make the roster due to the competitive wide receiver room, but a guy who could be a welcomed practice squad addition should he clear waivers after the cutdowns happen from 90 to the 53-man roster. And to be clear, I don't currently have him making the roster, but I guess I will never say never, and we will have to wait and see how things play out at camp and preseason first. We also got to hear from a few rookies today with the first being offensive lineman Juan Gay Morris. He's been taking care of his body and trying to get as prepared as possible for Andy Reid's training camp because he was told, Oh, it's going to be hell. That's, <laughs> that's what they told That's what they told me. But you know, you got to take that to the chin because like I said earlier, it's going to be hard. And if it was easy, everybody to do it. Juan Yeh then complimented left tackle Donovan Smith, who has already been giving him some tips and pointers about his hand usage and staying patient. And Juan Yeh said he feels very comfortable doing whatever coach heck asks him to do on the O-line, right side, left side, doesn't matter. He was then also asked if he was a trash talker and Felix Anudike Uzama answered that question for him. Are you a trash talker? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'll answer that question. You heard him. Uh, I can, but like, I'm a fun trash talker though. I'm not gonna like be disrespectful. And speaking of the local homegrown kid himself, Felix Anudike Uzama said today was tough, but hopefully it gets a bit easier as they all get acclimated to the climate and the style of practices and are as ready to go as they can be by the time the vets get in. It's also worth noting he had thumb surgery early in the off season due to an injury he sustained on the last defensive play of the game in the Big 12 championship and dealt with that recovery process during OTAs, 
but it's now 100% good to go, which is great news. How are you feeling now? Do you feel 100% anything that you're still yeah. trying to get comfortable with? Yeah, my hands, 100%, like, everything's fine. However, during OTAs, Felix said it was tough to be limited and not be able to do everything the coaches wanted right away, and he was basically taking a lot of mental reps during that time. He knows expectations of him are high with him being a first-round pick, so he's doing all he can to learn the playbook and will continue to glean all that he can from the vets and coaches during camp as well. And it's gotta be pretty surreal for Felix, who grew up in the Kansas City area, literally went to school right up the street from me, and even went to St. Joe as a fan to watch the Chiefs camp workouts when he was younger. And now he is obviously the one being watched by fans. And after he got drafted, Dante Hall linked with him to give him a little encouragement and advice, which was pretty cool considering Felix watched Dante Hall, the human joystick growing up. And FAU noted that since he got drafted, things changed for him in the city. Uh, he's got to be a bit more strategic now on where and when he goes out due to being recognized so often. Next up, another rookie. Second rounder Rashi Rice spoke today to the media as well, saying that between minicamp and now he's been training every morning with Shane Bouchel to get as prepared as possible from an endurance standpoint, yes, but also to get a hopeful glimpse into the mind of Mahomes through Bouchel. He just kind of taught me what's going through Pat's mind as far as me running a play and meeting with Shane, you know, during that little break, he gave me kind of a head start and then every day I'm gonna be meeting with Shane in his dorm just to go over plays before the next day. So I'll be prepared. And even though you can try and prepare for Andy Reid's camp, you can only be so prepared because it was reported that Rice had a bit of a rough practice today. <laughs> How hard was it today? I'm just kidding. And while he was joking on the mic, I guess Rasheed was out there struggling with the heat a bit. Maybe he briefly left practice earlier and then threw up in the middle of a drill. Like I said, he's expecting us to be able to run as long as we can. And I told them, like, to be honest with y'all, I don't mind puking. That just means I'm working as hard as I can so that I won't puke no more and be ready for the game. Rice continued by saying it's just a lot of running out there as the wide receiver room is basically like a track team. He did say, though, he is 100% ready for camp and mentioned he's lost around 15 pounds since OTA started, going down from around 215 pounds to 200 as he's working on getting a little lighter and even quicker. And then it was reported today that the Jets are planning on releasing wide receiver Denzel Washington Denzel Mims unless they can find a trade partner with several teams reportedly being interested in trading for him. Mims was drafted by the Jets in the second round of the 2020 NFL draft as six foot three, 207 pounds and ran a 4.3840. He's obviously a player who showed some promise, which is why he was drafted in the second round, but just never really had a good go with the Jets. He's averaged only around 10 games played each season with the best season he's had so far being his rookie year where he caught 23 passes for 357 yards, but he spent the first six games on IR due to a hamstring injury, then requested a trade last year around this time and looks like finally they're granting it this year. And I'm addressing this now because I know I'm gonna get asked about it. And honestly, I do not think the Chiefs need Denzel Mims unless Veach and company see something there, particularly in Mims, a particular strength or trait that is lacking in the current wide receiver room. And even if they wanted this man, they would definitely have to trade for him because if released, Mims will most likely get snagged, get claimed by some team off the waiver wire before before the Chiefs would even have a chance. So what say you guys? Are you fine with the wide receiver room as is and say, no thank you, Denzel Mims? Or do you personally see something in him that could be good for the Chiefs' current wide receiver room? He does come with a few years of experience, but in my opinion, the Chiefs needed to either add somebody like D-Hop to basically be wide receiver one or just keep things as is. And that is what I personally think they will be doing in this case regarding Denzel Mims passing on him, meaning not trading for him or attempting to claim him off waivers, even though if he made it to them for some reason, 32 on the waiver wire, they could potentially grab him, but I am not very hopeful. And I don't know that he's needed at this point in time. Either way though, make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.